Here's your topographic survey. And um, so, let's look at this. This is the um, area next to the uh, bay. I see elevations of six feet. Th this is the area that washed in um, from Hurricane Dennis. And it has elevations of five feet. Six feet over here. Um, two, three, four feet over here. So, and I, I guess Mr. Bloodworth may be able to share a little bit more light on, on why this spoil would have been here. I think it was because it was using a drag line. So we're not really raising the, the level of the property that much. And the, and, the, and, the decidu and the vegetation that is living there now is living there at six feet and four feet. And if we take it uh, four to six feet or eight feet even, I don't think it's going to go to eight feet. We, we, we've looked at this and evaluated where we, where we can get it down lower. But let's just say eight feet. I think that the, the ground cover that's there now is very likely that is existing at six feet now would exist quite well at eight feet. I think that's a reasonable assumption, two feet of difference. <clears throat> and over here on the corner, if you can see this, I'll zoom in here, it's nine feet right by the right by the um, right by the causeway on this southwest or excuse me, southeast corner. And the, the average height coming down Bay Shore is three to four feet. It's about, it's about three feet right there in front of Harry A's. And then over here, the topographic survey shows an average of four feet, four feet extending back into here. So, you know, the, if there is a berm wall that does go to eight feet, that's eight feet above mean high water, so it would only be four feet or three feet down around Bayshore and here on the on Bayshore Avenue, and, and there's even a question of whether it merit putting a poster board wall there instead of doing a, a maybe a one to two angle of repose with ground cover. And also coming along the um, the causeway, here here we see the causeway is around eight is around eight to nine feet, and coming down this entire run. You know, the, the lowest it gets is four feet, and it mounds up again to six feet. Four feet, five feet. So, you know, there, there was concern in the last meeting that there was going to be an eight-foot high wall running along the side of the causeway that would preclude you from seeing anything. I mean, there was a nice young lady here that said it, she thought it looked like a skyscraper. The reality is, because all of the, the causeway is at nine feet, and the maximum field above mean high water and the maximum field depth is eight feet above mean high water, if it goes that high, then there will be nothing above causeway height. Okay? I just want to try and make sure everybody realizes and understands it because, the, and, I, and, and here again, I doubt there would be a post and board wall along most of this area here because it is already at the height of the causeway or very close to it. And just to give you a visualization, if this thing will hold steady for me, is imagery. Here we go, picture I took yesterday, the day before yesterday. I, I met with several of the folks that were at the planning and zoning meeting. Um, Roger, are you here? Roger, here? Roger uh, Fettersmall, Fettersmall. And, I, I, um, and I also talked to uh, um, Gail, um, his name is, escapes me. Rigamire, thank you, God, about um, her concerns, and, and offered to meet with her. And, and I'm, and I left the gate open for a couple of days to let anybody go in there and wander around if they would like to. Well, you can see here clearly that the corner is right at the same height as the uh, Causeway Road. And here's another photo where, standing back from the fence, you can see the fence is pretty close to the height of the causeway um, right through there. Let's go to another one. This is looking back along the causeway and where the fence runs pretty close to the height of the causeway. 
So the only, you know, this this fill would not obstruct any view of the of the highway. Rotate this one. This is looking back down Harry A's Bayshore, where Harry A's is off to the left, and um, and you can see that 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 height is fairly consistent through there. It varies by maybe a foot. And um, another shot is this: the old ferry docks. If these are rising up four or five, six feet, and they're up, they're up from the high water line already because of the, the, the storm effects of Dennis moved a lot of sand in there too. Um, that that is close to the height of the. Uh, if you add four to six feet to that, you're going to get to the height to the height of those posts that are in there already. And, and my personal endeavor would be to keep this wall height down around five or six feet at most, maybe even less, by further dispersal of the spoil to other property to the west that has not been accounted for. Uh, I might also uh, add inland dredging that is doing the uh, dredging of the uh, intercoastal waterway was out there this morning doing their job. And um, look at this. It's the, you see the bridge right there, part of it. And if I can, uh, really cool, I'll zoom in on this. And if it's froze up, it won't do it. But here's the, they're dredging the channel. And this is right off the bridge. And, and that slurry pipe is about a 30 inch tube dumping slurry material right into an offshore dis disposal site. Yeah. You know, and we asked, we need to keep the intercoastal waterway open and maintained and safe for navigation. But why wasn't that standard, even when it's applied on, a, on the upland area that has eroded back when the critical habitat zone established in the 80s is arguably already washed into the bay? Why, why wouldn't something far less damaging and disturbing that would provide a safe harbor to mariners and to seafood workers and, and to be an economic benefit to our community be shut down because of an extremist interpretation of the ordinance. I mean, I, I think you're, you are extreme, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and that's why the Board of Adjustment made their decision. If, and you, you just said you're willing to make it for a man-made basin, but why not a man-made spoil bank that was there from the 1950s? That's when the basin was created. I mean, it, what's the difference? Is it just you feel different one day about it or something? I don't know, but it seems like it ought to be more consistent. <coughs> Back to the uh, photos. I think that's it. I mean, this is the this is the alternative that I would hate to see personally. But that's a filled up basin with a bunch of RVs in it, and that's just starting to touch the surface of how many RVs can be put on that side. And, and uh, y'all are aware that Walter Armistead on just the other side of the Causeway Road got the C3 <coughs> classification and with the express intent of doing an RV park. And, and I don't want to do an RV park. I, this is a, a thing for the community that I am giving back. And if you think I'm going to make a return on this as a harbor, it, I think, you know, maybe you ought to do the same kind of financial evaluation that you do with the, health, the hospital revenues. I mean, this is a huge expense. And it's an outgrowth of the Maritime Museum. And, and what we want to see there is this. This is the end of mine. This is what the harbor's been used for so far. Uh, student boat building program launches. House notes. I encourage you after this meeting today, just go over to the Maritime Museum. We've got a bug building class going on with two students from out of state, one of which has been here before. This is the new generation of maritime commerce and economies in our community. Uh, if we shut it down, now look at these kids. They've built this place and they're launching. This is our future. We've got a paddle wheel boat that I've spent four and a half years on the that this is going to be a safe harbor for you. Kids. Think about what you're doing here when you're voting to shut this down. You're voting for an RV park. And if you want to do that, it's because you want to make more money for George Fuller. And I can do that. And I will do that if I'm shut down on this. It'll be phase one. I'll fill in that harbor. 
in phase two when the common sense comes back around, we'll dig it out and we'll restore that harbor. We'll finish it up. But in the meantime, I'm not going to be shut down. You need to think about that. Ron Deerall, retired engineer, director of the Wooden Boat School. One last thing. Five years, almost five years, this is what's coming here. And I need a harbor to put it in when I'm cruising out of Latchcombe Bay. soon to depart. We're going to make a tour of 20 coastal communities in conjunction with the uh, grant funding that we've received, promoting Franklin County and promoting a return of paddle wheel transportation to this community. I'm the grandson of a paddle wheel, paddle wheel boiler engineer. My family's been here since 1842. This ain't about making a profit. It's about bringing new opportunities and new forms of maritime heritage and economies into our community. You think I'm making money at the paddle wheel, I mean at the Maritime Museum over here? It's giving back. It's trying to keep, create something new and beautiful from something from a rusted, built-in harbor. I, I urge you to think about that because this is a one-of-a-kind thing. And it's a one-of-a-kind opportunity. And I, I just would encourage you to listen to what other folks say. But think about this. Thank you very much.
Any comments from the commissioner? For solicit public comment. There being no comments from the commissioner. If you'd like to speak from the public, raise your hand and be recognized. Come forward, state your name for the record. I'm Larry Hale. I've been living on St. George Island 41 years. When I first arrived on St. George Island, we had a viable harbor there. A harbor that was greatly utilized even by a couple of snapper boats that used to go in and out of that harbor. Uh, Elena was the first hurricane that really damaged that harbor. And the owner of the property at that time used the property to get a very low interest loan on the idea he was going to restore it. The only problem was he spent the money on another project somewhere out west off Louisiana and of course the harbor never got restored. Ultimately it was foreclosed on. Uh, at one point uh, the developer tried to dig a uh, canal connecting the other canal to the harbor. Uh, planning and zoning in the state shut him down. He had been ordered to fill the canal in which he never did. Uh, he sold the dirt use it on other projects and uh, that's why it sits the way it does today it was vastly neglected the money was never spent to restore it uh, and uh, it, it's been a a terrible thing on st george island trying to find a place to launch your boat now the county built a ramp out there and i hate to tell you all this but that's a very poor boat ramp we have very poor it's heavily utilized but it's dangerous, especially on the east wind. There's no place to tie your boat off. Uh, once you launch it off the trailer, you better have somebody drive your vehicle out because you gotta stay with your boat. There's no place to tie your boat off. And sometimes you can't even get in and out of there when you have a real bad north wind and a low tide. But uh, this would be an asset to St. George Island, something that we desperately need. And it will do anything, but it will create uh, opportunities in Franklin County. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Mason Bean, St. George Island. Um, I don't think you could ask or pick, hand pick a, a more conscientious owner of this property. Uh, we're four miles out in the Gulf of Mexico. We need a desperate place and safe place, safe harbor to, to uh, launch a boat and have a boat for our tourism, for continued tourism, and certainly for emergency purposes. Um, I hope you will not only approve this, but I hope you'll continue to support it. Thank you. Shannon Hartsfield with the Seafood Work Association. And y'all know as well as I do, on the east wind, commercial watermen cannot put their boat overboard and go to work on that, where that fishing pier is. We need somewhere where we can launch our boats in a safe harbor and go out to work, especially in the summertime. Y'all know the issues we have in the summertime. Nowhere to park. The boat, limit, the boat slips are limited, and in the summertime, a lot of boats put over commercially, and a lot of boats pleasure. Lives like back in the summer, this past summer, a couple from Tallahassee, husband and wife, had a 22-foot 20, Mako with a 25-inch stern put over on the east wind, not knowing. They sunk. I just happened to be coming up when I seen them go down. I pulled them out of the water. FWC had a report on it. Then I pulled his boat, which I had to go up to his property, pull it in shore to, to bail it out. Uh, it was a pretty hairy situation. I put over there just about every day, five days a week. I built my stern up, and my Mako is 35, in 35 inches high, and I still have issues sometimes trying to put over there. I mean, my, I hurt my back uh, a couple weeks ago because it was rough. I've been doing it for a long time. You get careless. I slipped, made a mistake, landed on my hip, hurt my back. So it's, uh, it's a situation that's needed. And I don't see us doing anything that wasn't done before. And uh, we really need something for, for the seafood workers could have something to, for a plus instead of a takeaway. Hold on just a second. I got a question, sir. All right. Uh, is, you gonna, is he going to let the seafood worker use that? The, the deal is anybody that's part of the Seafood Work Association, and the reason the seafood, so, so, go through the Seafood Work Association because we all do their paperwork. 
five dollars to be a member nobody is discouraged from being a member that way the paperwork's done he gets the paperwork and he'll be we have a number it's your AP number for your Ulster license <clears throat> and uh you'll get a imagine a sticker on your truck to come in and out he's gonna have a gate you know limited access but the deal is we usually don't have at 35 40 boats that you need to use I mean 70 percent of us is trailered now you can look in the, in the there's nowhere to leave your boats is not it's against the law pretty much they do it 30 35 boats left in the channel in East Point rest of them's trailered more question I need to sit down yeah, you need to, yeah. Hope you get better. I, I would add, uh, Shannon and I had a breakfast last week. We talked about this. Um, we, we discussed um, that it would be a great resource for the Seafood Workers Association. And I, I think it's part of our maritime heritage. Uh, I shucked oysters in the line of quality seafood. You know, I, I know what it's like. And uh, the only stipulation we had is that um, anybody coming in with seafood workers would have to have a current drug test and not a felon felony record. And the reason for that is uh, we are currently working diligently to bring back Scout Troop 22 with Larry Hale and. Sheriff A.J. Smith and a number of other volunteers. Um, and we just don't want that kind of presence on the property because this, this is going to be the presence. You know, the, the Baptist Church ran off the scout troop. They went over to Nick's Hole, and then they got run off from there, and, and uh, it, it closed. There's no problem opening another bar on St. George Island. We've, we've had that, plenty of bars. But what we don't have is youth activities, and this is essentially a youth activity center. And I think that the Seafood Workers Association should have unfettered, except for the two stipulations, no charge access. We, we can't have boat slips in the basin, so we're going to set it up where they can all make to a, a face dock. And anybody that meets those stipulations and is worth the Seafood Workers Association, we want to have them in there. And, and uh, we, we even discussed having some kind of kiosk uh, type market working with one of the dealers to uh, have fresh oysters for sale. And George is flipping the bill for the, the drug test in the background check. We no money out of the, 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 the guy's pocket. Well, what about the item and don't belong to the seafood? They'll spend, don't belong to spend, the spend five dollars, become a member, and uh, then they got access to it if they if they're not. So they got to become a member to do that. Five dollars. The reason is we do all the paperwork. They have their driver license, Social Security. They have uh, their ultra license. We have all that paperwork to start them to get in there. Uh, he doesn't have a secretary to do that stuff. And we have over mm -hmm. we have over 200 members as as it is. Uh, like I said, nobody's denied to become a member. Where you got over a thousand that night? Excuse me. You got over a thousand that night. Over a thousand what? That is not a member. Uh, right now, there's about 200 oystermen right now. So I mean, you can look at the card holders. There's, there's every Tom, Dick, and Harry has card, cards, not even using them. I mean, I've been holding my license now for six years, and I had an oyster, but maybe three times in the last two years. Shannon, I have a question. Yeah, uh, Shannon, I have a question for you. Under, under this, and it hasn't been really spelled out a lot, but I know looking at our building codes, our comp plan for the county, if this basin has more than 10 boat slips, it's not just going to affect the area that was shown on the slide, it's going to affect the area mm -hmm. to the east of the $2 bridge, what we call $2 bridge. Are you aware of that? East of what? What are you talking about? Talking about in east hold in that area? If, if there's more than 10 boat slips according to our comp plan? Th there is no boat slips. There is no. There. But you can't just do away with it by making one long dock. It's pretty drawn out. I'm just, I'm asking if you're aware of that. Well, there may be no closures. Okay. 
just it let me know that I did ask you about that. So. Well, I mean, I talked with I talked with Cal Knickerbocker about it, mm -hmm. and he said as long as there's not, a, a, but, uh, what was it? Eight boats. Ten, ten boats. As long as there was no more than ten boats left in that slot, there would be no issues. And he, in, in the way he's got it, there will never be more than five or six. Okay. We, we certainly aren't going to do anything that's going to result in closures. It's my understanding that they could make up there overnight as long as they weren't six. Right. So yeah, I'm just, I want to make sure we're clear on we're what we're talking about. We should, we because should. a lot of us have oyster backgrounds, seafood backgrounds. It's not particular to a few of us in this room. It runs through the whole county. So my, my expression is from that. I grew up doing that. That's what my dad did. It's not all about me, but I'm just trying to make sure Shannon, since he's representing them, knows my concern. Those questions was one, my first questions from the get-go when we started this. And well, that's the reason I, so talk, I, I talked with Cal Knickerbocker yeah. direct with it yeah. and yeah. asked him about some of these issues. Right. And, and for him to do more than that, he has to come back to y'all to change okay. different things to do that, to be able to keep more boats in there. Right. And that will never happen. Well, I know you and I value your opinion. That's right. Well, the, well the, my biggest thing was it would it cause, because we've done lost hotel bar, because the dredge is pretty much like right now. They're covering it up. It mm -hmm. just, hotel gets covered up faster it can grow. Right. We lost Nick's hole. Uh, we lost <coughs> all those oyster areas. The only thing we have left over there is the east hole. You know, and my biggest concern was make sure nothing happened to East Hole, mm -hmm. but also make it where the guys have access to go to East Hole. Because there's days, you know, you get these south, south winds, and it's hard to run across the bay. Yeah. You know, just trying to find my access what, to be able to trailer, because 70% of the guys trailer the boats. Mm -hmm. Nobody leaves their boats in the water hardly. Mm -hmm. And those are my biggest concerns from the get go. Yes, sir. Let, let, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Shannon and, and Mr. Floyd, you said you're not you're going to be able to put how many oyster boats in there? My my reading of the regulations and, and uh, Dan's as well is is that the regulation affects boat slips, not however. No, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you how many boats did you say could be able to moor in there, or would he tie up, or whatever? on the size of the boats. Average oyster boat has got about an eight foot beam. And the run down from the side of the wall is about 100 feet on just the, the west side of the wall. How many are you going to allow in there, Mr. Joe Woods? I, I'm going to allow as many as will fit. That, ain't, that don't answer my question. I need a number. Well, need a 100 number. divided by eight is 12, 15. And, that's the, and then 12 there's boats. Well, there's that's that one what, side. What I'm trying, uh, what I'm trying to say is, twelve boats. You got no. two, over two hundred. Shannon said it yourself. You got over two hundred oystermen. You're gonna limit that to just those, those 10 are over, to twelve. Most of them are gonna be dropping and going and pulling out on their trailers. But, okay, so they don't really. Oh, oh they you won't, won't they get won't. the access point. For. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to get it clear. My because see, I'm hearing two or three different things, and I'm. I'm trying to get it clear in my head because well, um, it, if it's just going to be a place where you're going to launch and go and come back and go, then that's different. But if you're going to allow a certain 5, 10, 12, let's go 15 boats and they, they can tie up to a, to a pylon or something and all, then you're going to make it very limited of how many people do well, Probably the best guesstimate on numbers. See where is I'm getting from? Let me, let me answer a question. The thing is, the guys that leave their boats in East Point Channel, they're the reason they leave it in the border right there because they uh -huh. have issues. They don't have a very good motor. Yeah. You know, those kind of issues. I do, they don't run across the bay anyway. Most everybody that works across the other side of the bay trailers their boat. And that's what we're looking for to access, have a boat ramp. You know, not so much having a place to leave it over there, but having access to a boat ramp. Yeah. Is my, is our, or what, I mean, because like I said, you go to the fishing pier, you're limited on days you can really, unless you have, there's very few 30-inch sterns on oyster boats. You know, they, they can't put over there. 
But w- we've lost the it, we lost the inshore east hole because it's filled in. You know, used to that's where we, probably ten or twelve boats used to leave there, oyster boats leave <coughs> it in there. But they can't do that anymore because you got to have a storm tide to get out of there now. A regular tide, you can't get out of there. Some flat bottom boats can pull out of there on a regular mm-hmm. tide. Mm-hmm. You know, so we've lost that in there mm-hmm. completely. 